Rahim, salam alaikum. Donc on va reprendre un petit peu ce qu'on a fait, ce qu'on a commencé hier. On va être flexible, donc je vais peut-être être un peu bref sur la présentation pour laisser plus de temps à vos questions et je suppose même s'il si, si y a quelqu'un qui a un sujet bien défini ou euh, une formulation qui veut présenter au micro, la présenter même, faire une présentation et on pourra commenter euh, on est prêt. Donc on, on, on va diviser l'heure euh, entre, entre moi et vous on, on serait flexible. Je serais très heureux de répondre à vos, à vos questions, de donner un avis sur euh, un travail, bien sûr, dans la mesure de mon expérience. Je vous ai dit hier que je suis professeur en automatisme et traitement du signal. Donc si vous avez un problème de modélisation, euh, d'identification, d'estimation, de détection, de filtrage, de contrôle, ça c'est mon domaine. Ça s'appelle « system theory ». C'est l'automatisme et le traitement du signal, signal processing, speech processing, image processing. Tout ça, vous pouvez, euh, vous pouvez demander mon avis. Euh, en dehors de ça, euh, je n'ai pas l'expérience nécessaire. Donc, euh, est-ce que tout le monde qui est là euh, était là hier right? Vous étiez tous là. Donc, euh, je vais... Je vais euh, continuer un petit peu là où je me suis arrêté et si vous pensez que c'est trop de détails, vous préférez me poser des questions ou euh, partager avec moi donc, votre, euh, votre travail, votre pensée sur un sujet que, que vous pensez, je peux toujours donner euh, mon avis. Donc c'est flexible, c'est flexible. Euh, la présentation sera ici, euh, sera disponible à tout le monde. Et si vous m'écrivez, je pourrais envoyer beaucoup de documentation sur, sur ce domaine. Donc, on a dit hier que la dérivée fractionnaire et l'intégrale fractionnaire, c'est la généralisation de multiple, multiple integral. Euh, et donc, le factoriel d'un integer devient gamma function d'un nombre réel alpha. Euh, et donc à partir de ça, on a la dérivée et l'intégrale fractionnaire alpha. Alpha, il peut même être complexe. Alpha, il peut être square root of 2, pi, alpha plus j omega, 2 plus j3, anything. Euh, et donc il y a trois définitions euh, qu'on a vues hier. Donc je vais... Ils sont équivalentes dans plusieurs euh, conditions. Ce sont les définitions de, avec quelques priorités. Euh, propriété que je vais sauter. La place transforme est utilisée de la même manière. Euh, alors donc, ça c'est l'organisation des, des différents types de systèmes qui, qui viennent à partir de systèmes de phénomènes fractionnaires. Euh, et donc, Qu'est-ce qu'on est en train de faire avec les systèmes fractionnaires On a dit qu'il y a deux sortes d'équations différentielles, les ODIs, Ordinary Differential Equations, pour les systèmes de dimension finie, avec un nombre de conditions initiales finies. Exemple, un circuit électrique qui a 30 capaciteurs et 10 inducteurs et 2000 résistants. Quel est l'ordre du système quel est l'ordre de l'équation différentielle C'est 30 capaciteurs plus 10 inducteurs, c'est 40. Parce qu'il y a 40 dérivés. Parce qu'il y a 40 dérivés et 40 intégrales dans la capacité et l'inducteur. Donc, c'est une équation différentielle de dimension hein, euh, finie. Le nombre de conditions initiales, c'est 40. Il y a 30 Vc of 0, as le, le, la tension initiale, le voltage initial qui est storé entre les plaques le capaciteur, et il y a 10 courants IL of 0, euh, courant initial qui existe dans le coil. Euh, et donc ça, on les appelle ODI, euh, système 
d'équations différentielles ordinaires. Pour les systèmes de dimension infinie, là, l'espace entre en jeu, et, euh, ou bien l'espace entre en jeu, ou bien on ne peut pas représenter le phénomène physique par un nombre fini de conditions initiales. Exemple, le plus simple exemple possible. Un phénomène, le retard. Le retard, le retard pur. Hein, vous avez a pipe, flow of liquid going from the beginning of the pipe till the end of the pipe. Have le flow, W of T. The flow, W of T. What will be the flow at the end of the pipe? It's W of T minus tau, minus theta. C'est le même flow qui circule dans le pipe, mais il arrive ici, two seconds later. Two seconds later. Two, c'est quoi? C'est la longueur de pipe que divise la vitesse du fluide. C'est le taux. Donc, W T minus tau, la sortie, c'est Y of T, W T minus tau, par rapport à W T. Have le phénomène, hein? donc, la sortie, Y of T, c'est l'entrée retardée de tau seconds. Y of T equal W T minus tau. Have, c'est quoi? Ce n'est pas une équation différentielle ordinaire, ça il n'y a pas de dérivée, il n'y a pas d'intégrale. Ce n'est pas une équation différentielle partielle. Il n'y a pas dx, dy, dz. Il n'y a pas l'espace. Qu'est-ce qu'il y a Il y a un délai. Et délai, combien de points Un délai de 2 secondes, 3 secondes. Combien de points il y a dans 3 secondes Un nombre infini. 3, c'est un nombre réel. Entre 0 et 3, il y a un nombre infini de points. Donc, il y a un nombre infini de conditions initiales que vous avez besoin. Donc, le, le plus simple phénomène du monde, qui est le, le delay, est un système de dimension infinie. Il ne peut pas être représenté par une équation différentielle. Un, on les appelle système à retard. Système à retard. C'est un système de dimension infinie. Un autre, donc un troisième exemple, un système de dimension infinie, c'est un système où il y a la dérivée fractionnaire. Il y a la dérivée fractionnaire. Ce n'est pas la déri première dérivée, deuxième dérivée, troisième dérivée. C'est la dérivée fractionnaire. Alors, et si on a la dérivée fractionnaire dans une équation différentielle ou dans un système, qu'est-ce qui se passe dans le domaine du temps et dans le domaine de la fréquence Dans le domaine du temps, comme j'ai dit hier, toutes les équations différentielles du monde que vous pouvez avoir, toutes les solutions des équations différentielles génèrent quoi Polynôme exponentiel sine, cosine et mixture. That's it. N'importe quelle équation différentielle, qu'elle soit du premier ordre, un million d'ordres, whatever, qui m'a connaît, très direct, l'exponentiel, charging, discharging, polynomial, polynomial, You charge and discharge with polynomial. Voilà. You charge while oscillating. You charge exponentially while oscillating. That's it. Ma qu'est-ce que je Donc, avec le fractionnaire, on fait beaucoup plus. Uh, donc, from standard exponential evolution, to generalized hyperbolic. Uh, hyper, one over t, square root of t, so many other functions that you can generate And therefore, from control point of view, signal processing point of view, you are able to generate functions that no differential equation can generate. And hence, you will be able to identify or quantify a process uh, with this rich dynamic. Rich dynamic, uh, that could be, as I said, one of the t, square root of t, and, and many other things. What are you doing in frequency domain? For those of you who are in control of signal processing, you know what is a frequency response. A frequency response, it's a function of j omega in the complex plane. And when you plot its magnitude or phase, the every pole or zero of a transfer function of physical system contribute 
20 dB, plus or minus 20 dB per decade, the slope. With the fractional, it contributes alpha times 20 dB. So if alpha is 0.5, you contribute by 0.5 times 20, it becomes 10 dB. What does it mean? This is very important in terms of bandwidth, in telecommunications, in electronics, in terms of bandwidth, in, trans, uh, in terms of transition. It's very important that your frequency response decays with a certain slope. Now, with classical ordinary differential equations, you can decay only with multiples of 20 dBs. With fractional, you can decay with any slope, alpha times 20, alpha is any real number you want, it can be even complex, so you can, so it's a huge generalization of frequency, bandwidth, filtering, so it's a lot of, a lot of opening in uh, solving complex problems. You may want to develop a very sharp filter for some telecommunication application where you want a very specific slope. With classical, all you can get is 20 dB slope and multiple. With fractional, you can get any alpha times 20, can be any number you want. And what is it happening in terms of phenomena? In terms of phenomena, classical ordinary differential equation have short memories, such as, such as a finite number of initial condition to describe the behavior of the circuit in the future. In any RLC circuit, if you know the initial voltage across a capacitor and initial current in the inductor, you will be able to predict the behavior of any voltage and current in the circuit from now to the future. So you need a finite number of initial conditions. Well, what are you doing with fractional? You have a long memory. You, you remember all the past. You remember all the past. With differential equations, you don't remember all the time. All of you know from your first course in calculus, first math, math one in, in university, calculus one we call it, what is the definition of derivative? Dx dt is delta x divided by delta t, which is xk minus xk minus 1 over tk minus tk minus 1. Look at tk is present. tk minus 1 is one unit earlier, one memory earlier, one buffer of the computer earlier, one clock memory earlier, one, one unit. When it is fractional, it's a long memory. It could be an infinite memory. So you will be able with fractional systems to describe model uh, phenomena of long memory. We call them hereditary system, hereditaire. Hereditary system. And people proved that so many phenomena are naturally long memory. Example, porosity, viscoelasticity, elasticity, Many application in, in chemistry, many application in biology, many application in magnetism, they are naturally represented by long memory, and hence they are well modeled by fractional systems, if you introduce the fractional uh, derivative. This is what I mentioned yesterday. And uh, I showed all this, uh, that you can generate all kind of behavior for a signal, for, for a control uh, signal, uh, or for a speech, or for, you can generate uh, all kind of behavior which you couldn't with differential equations. All right, now, so people said, all right, this is useful, yes, uh, we can... Uh, we can uh, model uh, interesting phenomena that are not covered by differential equations. Now, we would like to do the same thing we did with differential equations the last two centuries. I want to know how to solve a differential equation. I want to know uh, <coughs> whether it's linear, nonlinear, solution exists, if it exists, is it unique, uh, are there infinitely many solutions, no solution, one solution, under what conditions, etc. Is there a closed form solution? Do we have numerical solution, etc. So people generalized solving differential equations into solving fractional differential equations. 
a differential equation that has half derivative, quarter derivative, square, uh, see, you see here, you see, this is, this is homogeneous differential equation, fractional order differential equation. Look at this. Beta n, this beta n could be anything. Beta n could be 0.2, square root of 2, pi. Pi's derivative of a variable. As uh, the professor asked yesterday, what is the interpretation? It's still an open problem. People from time, every year, there's one or two uh, big professors come up with a new geometric interpretation. As I said yesterday, if x of t is the position of a ball in the air, dx dt is the velocity at that ball, of that ball at that instance. But what is it, d half dt? dx half dt, half derivative of the position. We don't know what it is. We can give just a physical interpretation. But in some applications, we can, uh, we can as I said yesterday, for, for example, the impedance of a transmission line or the model input-output behavior of a heat, a heat exchange system is well represented by half derivative and hence the input-output relationship will be half derivative and in this situation there will be an interpretation because it's, it's physical, a heat, transmission line, etc. Impedance is from current to voltage. So, uh, <coughs> if you have fractional differential equation, well, people generalized, uh, generalized the solution. So, if you have a differential equation, what is the solution? As we said, the solution of every differential equation in the world is what? Sum of eigenfunctions, which are what? Polynomials, exponentials, sine. So the solutions of all differential equations in the world are summations of ci's t to the power n e to the lambda i t times sine cosine. That's it. It's nothing else. So what is it for fractional? It's much more than this exponential. It's much more than trigonometric. It's much more than polynomial. It is a special function called Mittag-Leffler. These people, Mittag-Leffler, developed this some century ago. What is it? Yes. So instead of having the exponential, you have this. Instead of having the exponential as the eigenfunction solution of the differential equation, you have some more sophisticated, you can see the gamma function, and you see the polynomial here. So it's function called mittag leffler because these are the people who developed it some two almost two centuries ago. And based on this, you have some crazy uh, solution. You see the terms here. Instead of having an exponential, you have this crazy equation. And this is implemented in MATLAB. Now there are many toolboxes of fractional systems. It looks very complicated, but you have to truncate somewhere and find the solution. There are many toolboxes of MATLAB on fractional systems. Control, estimation, just name. All right. Uh, so uh, uh, this is just uh, detail. So of course, you can solve differential equation in Laplace, in Laplace domain, as all of you in a first, second year university, you solve differential equation. One of the famous techniques to solve differential equations is in the Laplace domain. Take the Laplace transform of both sides of differential equations, and you put input in one side, output in one, none in one side, out, output and none in the other side, and you get the solution. Y of S equal. Same thing here. Same thing here. You have differential equation. Take Laplace transform of both sides, and this thing, because you have half derivative, you get s to the power half. Half derivative, s to the power half. If you had second order derivative, you'll have s squared. First order derivative, you'll have s. Third order derivative, you'll have s cubed. So here, you'll have fractional. This is called fractional transfer function. And the inverse Laplace of this <coughs> will give you the solution. And notice, the solution, the inverse Laplace of this, if here it was S, what will be the inverse Laplace of C over S plus A? It's E to the minus AT. E to the minus AT. The solution of differential equation is exponential. 
Well, that e to the minus a t becomes what? Metaglafla. So any exponential becomes that crazy metaglafla we saw in the last thing. Uh, of course, differential equations can be solved numerically. Same thing, fractional differential equations can be solved numerically. I will not go through the detail. There are some simple algorithms. All of these are implemented well in MATLAB, and many of the toolboxes are free, available in the, uh, in the internet. Okay, all of these are detailed of implementation. Now, for those of you who are in control and signal processing, you have a dynamical system with input u, output y. It's governed by this differential equation. If alpha, alpha i's and beta i's are integers, this is the famous ordinary differential equation that will come out of, out of using Kirchhoff's law in a circuit, out of using Newton's law in mechanical system, out of using Kepler's law in an aerospace systems, out of using Schrodinger equation in some electromagnetic systems, etc., etc. So, uh, <coughs> if alpha i's and beta i's are fractional or real numbers, not integer numbers, then you end up with what we call fractional systems. All right? And again, for those of you who are in control and signal processing, if you take the Laplace transform of both sides of rational system, you end up with the famous transfer function from input to output. This is again from input to output, and the beta a's will be fractional. So you don't have a polynomial divided by polynomial. No, you have a fractional polynomial. These are fractional. This beta zero could be pi. Beta m could be square root of two, anything. So this we call fractional transfer function. So you could imagine that there is some sophistication here. What are the poles and zeros? If this was, if this was integers, then you have an nth order polynomial by the fundamental theorem of algebra. An nth order polynomial has n roots. But this is not an nth order polynomial because alpha can be any number. Alpha could be pi, square root of two, anything. One over square root of three, anything. Therefore, it's not a polynomial. And therefore, what are the roots? So there is what we call Riemann surface and you have to find the roots. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of sophisticated mathematics, but as I said, what's good about it is all of these are implemented in toolboxes of MATLAB and are available, uh, some of them free of charge. So you can, you can simulate, model a physical phenomena, simulate it to MATLAB, and see the results, whether it fits to your uh, real data, for example. Of course, for those of you who are in control of signal processing, we, we model systems in differential equation form. We model systems in transfer function form. Last slide. We model systems in frequency response form, frequency dependent gain. And we model systems in the famous state space representations. And you can see, for those of you who are in control, it's exactly the same model, the same state space representation, the only difference in state space classical, we have x dot, x dot, first derivative, x dot, first derivative equal, oops, equal ax plus bu, and, uh, yes. Uh, see, it's all the same, a, b, c, d, everything is the same. What's the difference? Instead of having first derivative, you have alpha derivative. Instead of having first derivative, you have alpha derivative. And you can see that stability can be studied, controllability, observability. All the concepts developed in automatic control since, since the 60s can be applied, but with different interpretation, because now I don't have dx dt, I have d alpha x dt alpha. Alpha derivative. Alpha can be one half pi, square root of two, anything. And therefore, a whole bunch of theories were developed in 2008, I have a student, uh, PhD student in Tizuzu. We develop controllability and observability of this, of this system uh, as a generalization uh, for, uh, from the classical case. 
etc. You, you can do the Laplace transform. Uh, I don't want to bore you with this. These are things similar to the classical, except that the only difference, see, alpha enters. Everything is the same, except that alpha enters. Alpha enters everywhere. Uh, but at the end, as I told you a few minutes ago, instead of ending up with a solution that is exponential, this is not exponential anymore. This is the, the, the equation I showed you, the metag leffler function, that is generalization of exponential, as the factorial is generalized into a gamma function. So the theory is very smooth and goes very well. All right, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and as in the classical, you have impulse responses of system, step responses of system in closed form, instead of uh, being given in terms of exponential, it is in terms of beta Leffler, beta Leffler, and you have physical system, you want to control it, you plot the step response, you plot the impulse response, and see whether it is acceptable. Is it a good transient? Is it, does it have a big overshoot? Is it acceptable uh, steady state, uh, etc.? The same thing for stability here, the stability, you see, the stability is, is you, you use the same arguments, Lyapunov of stability, uh, but because it's not a polynomial, what we do, if these alpha i's are related, then we will be able to uh, develop this into a polynomial, and then it turns out that for this system to be stable, then the argument of the roots of the polynomial coming from this has to be above pi over 2, meaning, above pi over two. meaning you could have a pole in the right half plane that corresponds to a stable system. Of course, because it's different now. Now you have, uh, it's not a polynomial. It's a, it's a polynomial in alpha, therefore stability is different, but it's the same principle of the argument. It's the same, there is Nyquist, Nyquist stability for a theory for fractional system, root locus for fractional system, uh, uh, Lyapunov stability for fractional system, and people are still, uh, are still developing. Uh, so uh, I think this is a lot of uh, details. I'll, all of these are many, many directions of PhDs that I did uh, with my student. I graduated already seven or eight students here. Tizuzu and seven or eight are, are working on all these applications of uh, fractional systems for in identification, control, filtering, estimation with uh, applications. Uh, so I think I will, uh, I'll give you one application. I'll show you some applications and then, and then I let the time for questions and possibly some of you may formulate for me or might tell me uh, what is your problem and I may be able to help you. So all of these are experimental, but uh, let me skip. So as I showed last time, many physical systems are represented by, naturally represented by, or at least approximated by fractional. Uh, yes, all of this I showed yesterday. Uh, this is one application of one PhD student. Uh, so I will skip, uh, just we published this recently. We generalize for those of you who are familiar with the, those of you who are familiar with the IMC, internal model control. Internal model control has been famous. It made a revolution in the industry. It's a generalization of PID control, proportional integral derivative, to control uh, robustly physical phenomena. It's implemented everywhere in the industry. So this IMC. And uh, uh, with one of my PhD students, we develop, we generalize this to fractional, fractional IMC. Yeah. So all of these are generalizations. I will skip all this and give you one application of heat transfer uh, that we did experimentally. So these are uh, a new recipes of tuning, tuning parameters for controllers. I will skip all this. And uh, I'll give you the heat transfer example. Yeah, this is a heat flow. Uh, many of you have this if you are in control. We have it at Tiziuzu. So my student uh, Tiziuzu, I gave them an experiment to do here. They uh, send some heat from here and uh, through these sensors, yeah, heat from here, source of heat. And then the sensors will measure the temperature at uh, the, uh, different uh, places. 
and we identify the input-output relationship from the heat till the sensor, and we fit it, we fit it to uh, a fractional differential equation or fractional transfer function, and it gave excellent result, and we got many, many publications and more than one PhD out of this. So this is experimental. So this is experimental. See, this is experimental. And uh, we did some identification and control. So in simulation first, I will skip, uh, and then uh, we did it experimentally. This experiment was done at CZU some few years ago by a PhD student. And uh, we got very uh, consistent results with theory, I don't want to bore you with all of this. We develop controllers, fractional controllers. So uh, I will finish by just telling you that there are uh, many other applications. See, applications in uh, modeling of motors, transformers, skin effect, in phase lock loop, in robotics, many, many applications, in uh, signal processing, in mechanics, in robotics, in economics, and in thermal systems. All of this are still going on. Many new PhDs are coming up in this uh, applications besides, uh, besides the theory. There are many other applications. I will skip these are other applications. Viscoelasticity, these are well-known applications published everywhere. Uh, so, for the, so in biology, those of you who may be interested, there are things that can naturally be represented in biology by fractional uh, systems. There are many books available in the literature, available in the internet, you can even download them. Uh, and uh, of course, if you want to work in this area, uh, so many uh, possible, uh, uh, it's, uh, open. It's, it's open. You develop everything that was developed in control theory and single processing the last 50 years. So it, there is room for everybody. You, can have, you will have 100 theses in this area and you will not finish, you will not exhaust. You are not exhausted here. Uh, so all of these are uh, possible, possible directions for future research. I will stop here to give you a chance. Now, I, uh, as I said, I'll be very flexible. I will answer uh, any question you ask. If any one of you would like to present in the micro or by PowerPoint presentation, you are welcome to come and present the problem you have that you might think might be looked from fractional point of view, and I'll give you my comments, or some of our colleagues will give you a comment. So let's start with some question answers, and then every one of you is welcome to come here, and it feels good that I become a student once more. I'll go there and listen to you <laughs> after 40 years. <laughs> Any question? Any comment? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Any comment, any question, you have a problem, even if, if, if you are working in anywhere around electrical engineering, computer engineering, control, signal processing, image processing, with my age, I may be able to give you a half, half answer to your problem. <laughs> yes, please. السلام عليكم نيل بشير من جامعه جلفه أه نشكر الشيخ على 